We'll do a little short update video on a switch we covered previously as the KU LED switch. This one is made by GoSun and they've made some adjustments to it and definitely for the better. So let's check it out. So since this is just a little update video, we're not going to do the total unboxing of things. And of course, we've seen this particular switch before. This particular model is made by GoSun. It's a 15 amp relay switch and it's not a dimming. It's just an on off switch and we will be showing how to put Tasmoto on it. And you can put ESP Home or several other different firmwares if you like as well. So one thing I did notice they did upgrade right off the bat was the button they're using inside is more of a, I don't know, to make it simple is it's a clickier feel and more, gives you more feedback versus the other switch that we showed before the KU LED model. So it is a standard Decora as always. It does fit any type of face plate and you can see the screw holes do match up and it has the one LED right here. There is a slight Wi-Fi looking symbol etched in there, but you can hardly see it and you won't notice it. It looks like a pretty clean switch on the wall. So they do give you a faceplate in the box. It is a screwless design, but it does have their branding on the bottom. You probably could take some fingernail polish remover and remove that, but or you could just use your own faceplate to save you the trouble of having to clean the branding off of it. So as of the recording of this video, the Tuya Convert does work on this switch. And I even tried to attach it to the Tuya Cloud and it wouldn't update and block me out of the firmware. But if they do lock you out of the firmware, we are going to show you how to flash this without any soldering. So on the rear of the unit, there are four small screws and they're like a Torx bit type of screw. I'm going to use our screwdriver set to take these screws out and I will leave links to all the products we use in the video for you to check out. And as always, in the future, do check out the description of the video. If things do change in the video, I will update the video description below. So we'll take the four screws out. Now you don't have to do this if you were successful with to your convert we're just showing this for as a reference in case if you ever do get locked out of the switch for some reason with a bad firmware upgrade um, anything like that this is a really cool switch that allows you to attach to it and flash the chip without any soldering so once you take the four screws out you simply just pull on the face plate and it will come right off without with ease and there's no clips holding it on since this screws. So the ground is attached right here. Now you'll notice at the top, there is one LED. It is a dual color LED, which allows you to, on this model, you can control the two colors. It's not hardwired to the relay itself like the previous model. Now let's zoom in and check out this header right quick. Now you'll notice immediately on, they have a five volt up here. We won't be using that, but it is there available for you. Along with, they labeled them right for you. There's the TX, GPIO zero. It looks like 100, but that's actually stands for IO zero. RX, 3.3 volts and ground. And I'll show you how to do that with some breadboard jumpers with ease without any soldering. So at this point, you don't have to take the switch apart any additional for if you were flashing it manually using an FTDI adapter or whatnot. But we want to take a look at the switch inside just because that's what we do. So it looks like there's one additional screw at the top. It holds the board in. We'll have to push the wires up to get the board out. And there it is. And you can see the little Tuya module here. It's a model SW1. And we'll go ahead and zoom this in and put it for a few seconds. So in case you wanted to pause the video and take a look at the inside of this switch. And there it is. And of course, you don't have to do this. We're just showing this for this teardown video. They also did label the GPIO pins on the back side of the PCB as well for you. So let's put this back together and we'll show you how to flash it manually in case you didn't want to use to your convert. So what I found is pretty easy to do with 
this switch is due to this isn't a standard header it's just some little holes that they have in here actually we'll use some little breadboard jumper wires and if you don't have any breadboard jumper wires there's a little kit that I have by Elegoo and it's not that much more for this kit versus say even a bundle of jumper wires and plus you get a, some cool other little electronics to play with so in that kit there's even the Uno R3 and the USB cable that goes with it there's a whole mess of breadboard wires plus there's a bunch of different resistors and buttons and LEDs and even some DuPont jumper wires for you and allows you to, to play with and some other electronics or even start teaching the kids how to do some things with electronics and resistors and it's a pretty cool little kit but we're going to be using it for the breadboard that comes with it and we'll be using the this CH340G adapter which I will leave a link to I found that these have a little better power regulator at times and you don't run into some of the issues you have with that genuine FTDI adapter driver issue and since it has the pins real easy you simply put it on the pins and you can push it right down into the breadboard and it fits right down in that little slot and they fit down in there and you can just put your breadboard wire straight into the row that they are along with the one for GPIO zero and ground gets continuity together and put it right into the switch so let's get that wired up right quick so we'll do a blue one for TX we'll start over from the right we'll grab a green one for GPIO zero and once you stack these in the holes together they will kind of keep themselves in once you get these four in a row and the ground one there is something the part of the case is behind there so you can just kind of you can still put it in there just got to be put I put it in last we we'll use a yellow one for RX we we'll would use a red one for 3.3 volts then we'll use a black one for the ground we should be able to prop it to the side and hold itself in there still so to wire these up if you're not familiar with a breadboard is that these pins this pin goes in this hole is the same continuity all through these holes until it gets to this line and it stops so these are all in a row parallel to each other so make sure you are using the 3.3 volts on this adapter there's a little jumper to put it on 3.3 volts the first one is 3.3 volts just stab it in the hole and you will swap the RX and TX lines and TX we used blue so blue goes to RX on this side so that'll go in this hole the TX is yellow on this side and then the green and the ground will go in the same row while we're flashing to put it in bootloader mode and that's it looks a little messy but it's just for flashing you didn't have to solder anything you didn't have to strip any wires or anything to deal with flashing this and we'll just use a USB cable to plug into here and attach it to our computer to flash Tasmodo so if you missed the eTech three-way video I did an in-depth process on how to flash with the USB with Tasmodo but we'll go through real quick and do that again we're just gonna do it a little quicker so we're going to releases scrolling down and we are flashing the sonoff.bin we'll download that file and then we will download the node MCU Pi flasher and flash it over that way which is also under the releases tab so at this time you go ahead and plug in your USB adapter you should get the chime probably depending on your computer load up node MCU Pi flasher and this particular one if you don't know which one it is you can do auto select but I know mine is COM13. We'll leave it at 115.200. Make sure you put it on D out, and then we'll also do a one step wipe data, and then we'll browse to the Sonoff bin file. Then, once you have everything selected, hit flash node MCU. If you get this message showing it's uploading stub and running stub, you know you have the wires correct. If not, go back and check your switch. To make sure your wires you do have your rx and tx transposed between the switch and your usb device and make sure that ground 
is still touching on the breadboard jumper wires. So once it's done, you can go ahead and close the pie flasher. And now at this point, you'll need to remove GPIO zero, which if you remember, that was the green wire. So we just remove it from the breadboard and we can leave that to the side. And then you'll also want to pull the power on the USB and then plug it back in to reboot the switch to take it out of bootloader mode. Now we'll load up Termite, make sure it's on COM13, click down at the bottom and hit enter. And then Tasmodo's on it. So you flash the switch without any soldering. At this point, we can issue the commands for SSID and password to make it on your Wi-Fi. Simply at the bottom, you'll just type in SSID space, then my SSID or whatever your SSID is to your Wi-Fi. Once you do go ahead and put it in, it's not going to connect to your Wi-Fi unless, of course, you don't have any security, which you shouldn't. What you need to do is put in your password to your Wi-Fi and then press enter. And you'll simply put in password space and then your password and hit enter. So once you've done that, it should reboot and it'll show connected and take note of the IP address shown. And then we'll flip over to the Tasmoda GUI and put in the switch configuration that way. And we'll also at this time, we'll put the switch back together and connect it to mains power. So we're connected to mains power. We're gonna go ahead and use the cliff quick test again. And then we'll throw a Wago 221 connector on the end to deadhead the power of the switch when we turn it on. So once you're in the Tasmodo GUI, we need to go ahead and paste in the template. And we'll leave the template in the description of the video. We'll pull the template into the clipboard. Go to Configuration. Go to Configure Other. And we'll paste it over this template. And make sure the Activate box is checked. And we'll go ahead and put in a friendly name for the switch as well while we're here. Let's call it the Ghost Sun SW. And we'll hit save. As you can see, a very faint red LED light is blinking because of the MQTT is not set up. So we'll go ahead and set up MQTT. Go to configuration, configure MQTT. So in MQTT, you'll go ahead and put in your host information. The client, leave that the same. It'll make that unique for the switch for you put in your username and password and then the topic you will need to make that a unique topic and it is case sensitive so pay attention when you put in that topic and use it later it is case sensitive we'll go ahead and hit save now you'll notice once it boots the red led up above is not blinking anymore we'll go ahead and check out the switch and push the button on the front now one thing you'll notice when you push the button it is going to toggle right back off because we are using a switch configuration in the template because typically I do like to use a long press and a short press action on the switch. But if you don't wanna use that, you can use a button configuration by going to the template and changing that to a button, which will show when we change the LED colors around. To use it as a switch, as a long press, you need to go issue one command on the console. You switch mode one and a five and then another option i like to do is set option 32 and put 10 and that'll do for one second now if you put like eight that's going to be 0.8 seconds just depends on how long of a long press you want the default is 40 which is four seconds and that's much too long to hold down a switch and now at this point you should be able to push the button and just instantly turn it on. Now you'll notice you're gonna get a green light in the current template when the switch is turned on. Now some people may not like that bright light say in a bedroom or something. So I'll show you how to switch that around. Now the red is gonna be for the link light and that'll show if there's an issue with Wi-Fi or MQTT, it will blink that red LED. Let's go see how to flip this where we're gonna do red for the switch and then green for the link so we'll go to main menu go to configuration go to configure template and here's where you can change this to button one if you want to use buttons instead of having to use the switch option like we showed now you'll notice you'll have led2 i which is inverted and then led1 and i as well for inverted 
we'll just change these around. We'll change this one to LED 2i and we'll change this one to LED 1i and then we'll save it. And now you'll notice the green LED is blinking for the link light. Now since it's on, the red LED is lit up and if we toggle it off, it'll turn the red LED off. So really simple, you don't have to do any commands or anything and you change the LED colors of the switch, which we couldn't do in the previous model because of the LED was hardwired to the relay, which is a really good change, much like I like on the Martin Jerry switches. And now you can see without doing any coding or any crazy commands, you just change the color of this LED back and forth just by changing the template. So there you have it. There's the Go Sun switch flashed without any soldering. Now, of course, you can use to you convert it this time from what we found. But of course, we, as we know in the future, that may not be the same. They may patch the firmware on this particular switch and lock us out from to you convert. But of course, you can flash it without soldering, which is great. So of course, how the pendulum swings back and forth. One of our favorite switches was the Martin Jerry switch because of a couple things you could use to you convert with it. Plus, you had the LEDs you could do the dual color with where you could change the color of the LED back and forth unlike the previous version of this switch you couldn't. Now that this switch is solderless and since you can change the color of the LED this is probably going to switch back to being again one of my favorite switch types unlike the Martin Jerry where they did block the firmware for to you convert on this because they changed the revision of the board inside. So thanks for watching this little update video and stay tuned for our little series on Tasmodo tips and tricks. There will be little short videos on various tips for Tasmodo that you may not know you can do in Tasmodo. If you're not already a subscriber, make sure and hit that bell icon and hit subscribe so you'll catch those videos and our next live stream. And y'all take care.